So, I hear you like badass weapons. Well, boy, do I have a surprise for you. <laughs> What's going on guys? This is Trinkill and welcome back to another Dead Island Guide. This time I am going to be showing you how to find all five secret weapons in the game. For those of you who don't know, there are five developer weapons in the game that were just uh, put in there for funsies, I suppose. And each of those weapons has a mod assigned to it. A mod is just like any other mod that you find, like a shock mod or anything like that. You pick that up and all of a sudden you can craft it at a workbench. Now, each mod has a colored skull assigned to it, and each colored skull has its own respective drop-off location. So there are ten secret locations in the game, five skulls, five drop-offs, and I'm going to show you where every one of those is in one video. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. As I said, there are five colors. Those five colors are purple, blue, brown, green, and orange, and we are going to be collecting them in that order. So, starting off with the Purple Skull, you're going to fast travel to the church in the city of Moresby. Follow my path here to the first little sewer entrance. And then you're going to watch the video and it will direct you right to a little slimy green room with two or three zombies in it and a floater. Dispatch these guys however you see fit. One rage move with most people should be able to take it out except I fail hardcore on this one and whiff. Anyway, once you've dispatched of these zombies, head up the ladder there, you're gonna come to a U-shaped catwalk. If you take the U-shaped uh, catwalk all the way to the end, there's going to be a pile of skulls here, and on the far left of that pile is the purple skull. So snatch that up. Once you've got your purple skull, you're gonna turn right around, you're gonna slide down this corner of the sewer wall here, and you're gonna head right back out the way you came in. If you can't figure out how to get out, obviously this video will direct you right to the exit. Once you get outside again, pull your map up, and you're going to want to take the map all the way over to the far right-hand side. And you're going to see this S-shaped curve in the street here. You're basically going to follow this S-shaped curve to where it starts to turn vertical again and put a waypoint right on that spot where it starts to turn. Once you do that, follow the white dots over to that direction, and I'll show you what to do when you get there. Once you reach the end of your dotted line path, head up this staircase here, avoid this hungry slut who tries to eat my face, and head back into the back corner of this area. You'll find an abandoned house door, inside of which is a shit ton of zombies. You'll kill all those guys, head upstairs to find another shit ton of zombies, and at the end of this hallway, there'll be a door on the right which leads you to the turn-in for the Purple Skull. Now once you turn in the purple skull, you will get the developer's number 4 craft, which once crafted leads you to the mind-blowing military knife, which has a 75% chance of exploding zombies' heads on impact, which is just retarded. So once you go in that door, you're going to take a left. Go in that left door and you'll find yourself in a kitchen. The turn-in is on the stove with the little burner that's lit. Once you place the purple skull there, it will explode into a frenzy of fireworks and a random bear will appear. Grab it. Head across the hallway into the bathroom. You're going to take a left. Once you get into the bathroom, there will be a shelf with some glass on it. Break that glass and you are now the proud owner of the blue skull. Once you've got your blue skull, you're going to find your way back to the church. Once you're at the church, you're going to head into the front door to the fast travel board, and you are going to fast travel to the resort bunker number two. We are not going to be turning in the blue skull, we're going to be grabbing the brown skull. Head into the sewers that are right in front of you, or I guess it's just a, it's a hatch down to the basement. There will be a little suicider down here. Let him kill himself, and once he explodes, there will be some body part wreckage on the ground. The brown skull will be right in the middle of that wreckage. So once you've got your brown skull, you're basically going to turn around. For some reason, you have to head down to get back up. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, you uh, head over to the fast travel board and fast travel to the lifeguard tower. You're going to jump over the rail and down the mountain here. You can slide down without taking any damage. Get to the end of this board, boardwalk or whatever, and head left down the beach. Now at any point going down this beach, you can put a point on your map at the base of where these two mountains meet. Once you do that, it'll create a white path and lead you right to where these two planks head up the base of a mountain. 
Go up these two planks, follow the arrows that are painted on the rocks you'll see here in a second. And this will lead you to the turn-in for the Brown Skull. Now the turn-in for the Brown Skull gives you the developer's 666 craft. And that gives you the ability to craft the Left Hand of Glova. If you don't know what the Left Hand of Glova is by now, it is a weapon that will drain all of your stamina when it's used. But if you're one or two feet away from a zombie or a group of zombies, it will send them all flying to the ground. So it's pretty amazing. It can actually be used on thugs and floaters and anything like that to knock them down so you can stomp their skulls. Speaking of skulls, at the base of this flag is a pile of them, and that is where you're going to turn in your brown skull, and poof, magically, another teddy bear appears. Grab that for your next developer's mod. Now the next step we're going to take is turning in the blue skull. Remember, we still have that. And you can do that by following the guide here and putting a point where I do on the map all the way down in the south and be prepared for a really long-ass walk. Now at the end of that walk is going to be the turn-in for the blue skull, obviously. And the turn-in for the blue skull is going to give you the developer's number three craft, which gives you access to crafting the plague-bearing military knife. What this thing does is basically the same as any other poison dagger, except it's got a 100% critical chance, so it will poison them every single time you hit somebody with it. Not only that, it does 10% more poison damage, and the poison lasts 10 times longer, which is pretty cool. Now once you get down to your bunker that we're looking at, there's going to be two thugs and a bunch of zombies. To save myself some embarrassment for getting knocked down, I'm going to fast forward. And you kill all those zombies and you save this guy. Now he gives you some experience fight. and then turns you around to walk to away. And through the magic of editing, poof, he's gone. Anyway, you're going to head into his bunker. There is a basement. You're going to go down into the basement and you're going to come up on this door here. Now this door doesn't seem like it's actually an active door. You can't open it. You can't, you know, shoulder smash it down. But if you head up this ladder, grab one of these explosive barrels, and toss it down by that door, you can either shoot it or throw a weapon at it, stand back and watch the fireworks, and when the smoke clears, you can see that that door is magically gone. We blew it the fuck down. Anyway, I don't know how anybody figured that out, but here's your blue turn in, and again, magical teddy bear, and uh, grab that for your third mod. The next thing we're going to do... Already down here is the green skull. So if you make your way back out, and you can see here, I'm just standing outside where we originally went in. Pull up your map, and over here on the top north side of this little mountain here in the middle of the sand, place a map marker and head that direction for the green skull pickup. And once you near your waypoint, hop out of the truck, head up these rocks. We're doing a little bit more mountain climbing. There's going to be a landing at the end of this rock section where you can jump down. There's a toolbox and a locked box. Inside that toolbox is the green skull. Grab that sucker and head back to the lifeguard tower where you can fast travel to the square, which is Nick's hideout. It's at the bottom of your list. Head outside of his hideout, pull up your map. Once you do that, you're going to put a waypoint right on the entrance to the sewers where we originally escorted Joseph. Now, I'd also like to mention real quick, if you do not have the square on your fast travel list, you can always fast travel to the church and take the long way down. Either way, you need to head over to the entrance where you originally escorted Joseph. And uh, this is where the video is going to get really boring. We've got a long, winding road through the sewers, through the city hall, through another stretch of sewers... Then through the supermarket where we're going to turn in the green skull, grab the orange skull, and head back out into the sewers to turn in the orange skull. Now, you're going to want to follow this path very closely. I'm going to talk about what you get from the green and orange skull turn-ins, and uh, you can kind of watch the path as I'm discussing that. Now, the green skull, when you turn that in, you get the developer's number two craft, which gives you access to craft the home run bat. And while not the best developer's mod, it is probably the most fun, unless you're Logan with the mind-blowing military knife. It's only got a 25% critical chance, but when it hits, it sends enemies flying. And I'm talking about thugs, butchers, uh, floaters, it doesn't matter if they go flying if it crits. And it does extra physical damage too, so when they hit the walls after they've gone flying, they take extra damage. So it's really neat. 
Um, again, it's got a much lower critical chance than some of the other weapons, but it is really cool nonetheless. Now we're nearing the end of our first stretch of sewers here, and you're getting ready to see me head into City Hall, through City Hall, through another stretch of sewers, into the supermarket, and that's where we're going to drop off our green skull. Until then, let's talk about the orange skull. Now the orange skull is going to give you the developer's number one craft when you drop it off. And the developer's number one craft is going to allow you to craft the electro military knife, which I think, I don't think there's any real argument that it is the worst developer's mod. It's only got a critical percent of one. <laughs> the next closest to, the next lowest is the home run bat, which has a 25% chance. So... I really just don't see, I mean, it does a lot of critical damage, and it does it for a long extended period of time, but it just doesn't hit enough to make it like, ooh, a super secret weapon. So I, I don't know what they were really thinking with that. But anyway, here's the entrance to the supermarket. You're going to head in through the supermarket door. There's going to be a steam valve you got to turn off, and then a slew of zombies, including walkers, infected, and a fatty. So uh, head past them. And you're going to come to a staircase. Instead of going up that staircase, head underneath it, and there is a shopping cart with an orange skull in it. Grab that, then head up the staircase. This is going to be kind of like the police station. There's a long stretch of hallways with some stuff you got to jump over. And you're going to come into the supermarket section. And you're going to hug the right wall. You're going to hop over this set of refrigerators here. Then you're going to hop over this collection of shopping carts to an aisle that's got a shit ton of teddy bears in it. You're going to find the turn-in for the green skull. And the teddy bear to the left of the turn-in is going to activate, finally, one, one of the teddy bears that makes sense. And there's also a pretty good level-dependent shotgun right next to that, so you can snatch that if you want to. Head back out of the supermarket and back the direction you came. Now, if you did not kill the zombies the first time, you're obviously going to have to run past them a second time or kill them this time. Uh, for some reason, they seemed a little harder going back through them. I get grabbed by a walker, and then an infected chases me all the way back to the uh, entrance to the sewers. Anyway, get back to the sewers, and you're going to head back to that green room where there's a bridge and a refrigerator that you walk past. And instead of going left across the bridge, you're going to take a right path that's going to lead you up a ladder. You'll see that here in just a second. Here's the ladder I was talking about. You're going to head up this ladder. There's a walker passed out on the floor up here. You're going to kill him and head into the door up here. You're going to make a Yui around some boxes, and there is the turn-in for the orange skull. You now have all five developer mods and can craft away. So uh, that about does it, guys. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, make sure you let me know. And if not, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.